I'd like to welcome the first of our visiting finance ministers now to the stage, uh, Minister Agnes Hornung is the Minister of State for Financial Policy Affairs in the Ministry for National Economy of Hungary. Please come and join me. So we're going to crack straight into our questions here, as discussed. We're going to look a little bit at the, at the past and then go towards the future, which is better than the other way around. Um, obviously, we all know the Hungarian economy is performing quite well. 2.6 uh, growth rate. Uh, you've got lots of nice German car manufacturers and so on, and uh, uh, choosing you over Mexico. Um, you've got that low-cost, high-skill manufacturing sales story that I referred to in my opening remarks, but then you still get described sometimes as hostile to investors. So why is that? Thank you very much, and first of all, thank you for uh, being here. It's a very great uh, pleasure and honor. And um, let me start uh, by saying that we were talking about that uh, we are in a very difficult uh, situation worldwide and Europe-wide. We were talking about the states. We could have talked about China. We were talking about uh, elections in some countries. So these are all, all different. This is one fundamental that we have to take into account. The second one I think is uh, very important that every country, country has its, uh, its uh, specialties. And um, that's why every country acts and reacts differently to the circumstances that are um, coming. And the uh, third one, of course, there are cycles. And um, there were crisis situation, there are a kind of recovery situation, and now, if we, we will also talk about the future, uh, there are also, let's so-called, the building uh, phase of uh, economies. I want to press you a bit on this reputational issue, if I may, because it, it does come up. Um, they, there was a quotation from the Financial Times, not that the Financial Times necessarily um, knows any better than anybody else, a reputation for being hostile to investors. Now, naturally you would say that's an unfair reputation, but why does it exist and what is, how do you counter it? Yeah, that's, that's why I wanted to just to start at the sure. beginning, since uh, there was a crisis situation. And given Hungarian conditions, Hungary was in a very bad economic uh, situation, deficit was high, public debt was high, growth rate was uh, very low. So, and um, we had to react very quickly to the crisis situation and we need very effective measures. And we also have to uh, think about that we are surrounded with the uh, EU um, legislation which is very strict and uh, puts countries into a very narrow pace. So basically uh, at the crisis situation first time is the income side that you have to increase on the budget to enable the company and the, and the economy to then uh, step um, by step uh, emerge it. So there was this crisis situation and there were very special measures introduced by the Hungarian government at that time. But this was just a kind of reaction to the crisis situation. Now these times are over. Uh, I don't know when this uh, quotation was uh, born, but um, uh, the number of these measures reduced significantly uh, starting from 2013. And now they are, um, uh, we can say that uh, these disappeared. And are there particular, very quickly, are there particular sectors that you're targeting now? You're back in this growth phase. Are there particular sectors that you're targeting now for FDI? Of course, because if we are also talking about the future, um, there are several steps that are enabling countries to build on the future. Um, f just one uh, thought back uh, to the original question that um, in, in, in the crisis situation, these special me measures uh, were done, but they were also phased out uh, at, um, after the crisis situation. So um, let's talk about the banking sector since we are here in a Euro Money conference. Uh, there was a special banking tax introduced that um, uh, was a burden on the sector. But the, uh, at the beginning of 2015, there was an uh, agreement between the sector and the government to reduce the banking tax. And then it was done. It was halved 
uh, from 2015 to 2016, and it's, there is a further decrease in banking tax uh, uh, from 2017 and 18. This is one example, but all these um, special measure, measures were phased out. And then this also gives now the possibility to the country to uh, step by step emerge itself. Of course, this is also very special. Hungary, as you also told, was a country of um, uh, car manufacturing because we are very good in labor. And uh, we did a lot of reforms to increase our labor market and to increase our um, activity rate. We were, uh, I can say, very successful on their, them. Uh, there are special uh, um, tax system introduced. There are special system for the most vulnerable groups uh, uh, to, to decrease the tax wedge on their labor force. There is a very uh, special public uh, work scheme that we introduced. So now we are in a situation that um, uh, activity rate is really high uh, and the unemployment rate is really low. But now we are facing another challenge here in Europe, that, uh, which is lack of uh, skilled employment. And this also relates to the, to the question of FDI. So how we can um, foster FDI to Hungary if we have enough uh, skilled labor force? So the next step, and if we are talking about the future, is to um, increase uh, the number of skilled labor force. What we can do for this? Increase education and foster education, vocational training, make uh, workplaces where people can work. And, and these are obviously things designed to increase productivity, to increase competitiveness. Uh, what other measures are there on competitiveness and productivity that you're putting in place? These are all related to each other. So as I said, Hungary was a kind of a country of uh, labor force in the past, but um, the growth that is only relying on the increase of uh, employment has its limits. So now we have to change and we have to be more productive and more efficient. In the area of labor force, wages and efficiency are related to each other. So um, how to increase efficiency? The Hungarian government decided to increase the minimum wage because if we increase the minimum wage, then uh, this uh, foster uh, both uh, companies and uh, employers and uh, employees as well to be more efficient, to invest more in more effective and more productive investments. So if we do this, then there will be uh, more uh, uh, effective workforce in those places which are more productive. And um, this is a kind of uh, answer to this uh, situation. And and just be because this is only one thing that uh, we did, just to ease the situation of the employers, parallel to the increase of the minimum wage, we decreased also social security because of after the crisis situation, we did so many reforms and measures that uh, so-called unconventional that now enables the budget to have these kind of reforms. And the employers are happy with that trade-off. Yes, this was an agreement actually between uh, employers, employees and the government and this is, was also a very important situation that everybody gives its agreement because it uh, it's, uh, depends on everyone's future. Just in the last minute, talking about employment and employers, Hungary obviously has this, this excellent labour force, also very good engineering capabilities, of course the automobile industry fosters all of that kind of thing. What's the next stage in terms of innovative companies, new companies, high-tech companies? And that's one part of the very quick answer. And the second part is, is there sufficient finance available domestically in Hungary for those kinds of innovative companies to go forward? Uh, apart from car manufacturing, we were also good it, in innovation. This was a very uh, important element. We, for example, our taxation system is helping uh, R&D very much, so there are lots of companies doing their R&D in Hungary. This is one thing that was already done. Uh, second, what I would quickly answer to your question is that um, uh, from this EU fund circle until 2020, now there is 60% uh, is dedicated exactly for economic development, helping SMEs, helping those companies which has a higher productivity level. This is also an important element to create those workplaces where uh, higher productivity can be achieved. And we were talking about education, which is also an important element, and, uh, and um, the increasing, uh, increased wages where people are um, 
um, doing, or getting uh, right wages for their uh, good job. And venture capital, bank finance, market finance, governments, prompted finance for those types of companies? Sorry? Venture capital type finance for new innovative companies? Yes, this is also included in uh, those uh, type of ref uh, reforms and measures that uh, financing, um, uh, especially in Europe and in Hungary, which uh, uh, was much more related on bank loans. And now it's also changing that now we have to try to find more attractive solutions, especially for SMEs, because there will be another challenge to increase the SME sector. They need equity financing. So um, within the European Union, as it was said by the minister and by uh, the governor as well, measures are done and approved by European Union. They're, they were implemented in Hungary. And we are also having discussions with um, uh, special uh, organizations, uh, stock exchange to increase and um, uh, uh, these possibilities for, for um, different financing forms. Very good, an optimistic picture. Minister Hornung, Kusunum. Kusunum, Thank you very much. <laughs>